Hello my fellow YouTubers and subscribers and welcome to my latest movie review where today I return to the world of Disney animation. If you can see the picture behind me, you know that I am going to be reviewing The Black Cauldron. This movie was released in 1985 and is directed by Ted Berman and Richard Rich. Interesting name. And it's uh, one of the uh, 2D Disney animated movies. And it's actually one that I had never seen before. I'd never actually seen this movie until today, till I started watching it. I watched it on Disney+, Plus, hence the picture in the background. So, yeah, let's, let's go into this one. So the plot of The Black Cauldron is as follows. A young boy and a group of misfit friends embark on a quest to find a dark magic item of ultimate power before a diabolical tyrant can... So, The Black Cauldron. Uh, this movie is often hailed as a bit of an underrated gem. Some people love this movie. Some people say it's amazing and, and really think that it's underappreciated. And I can see where they're coming from, but I wouldn't go that far. I don't think The Black Cauldron is a, is a masterpiece by any stretch of the imagination. It's not one of the best Disney animations. But for me, it was a, it was a solid, fun romp of a story. I do think that the animation for this is absolutely stunning. The... The landscapes and everything, the drawings, the, the cinematography looks great for this movie. This movie is like an animation epic. It is so good and there's even some wide um, cinematic shots which do look very impressive and really do help you feel involved in this sort of fantasy world. And it is a darker movie than a lot of the other animations. So if you do have young children, perhaps uh, just forewarn them about some of the scary moments in here. And some of the effects are, are very impressive as well. Like, the, it's been very well animated. I mean, there's no doubt about that. The animation is superb and it works so well. And it's a very kinetic movie. It moves very well. And it's a fantastic movie on an aesthetic level. The story, it's pretty standard. You know, it's it's a fun adventure about getting to this cauldron and stopping the villains. You know, it, the story is incredibly thin and basic. But it's fine. It, it works for what it is. And I can totally just, you know, turn my brain off and just have fun with it. It's it's it's, it's fun. It, it's definitely a lot of fun. For me, the story, it, it is very kinetic and it is moving very quickly. But because of that, I do feel like there are, there are a lack of emotional moments. Like the emotional beats don't really hit me as, as well as I think other Disney films do. Because this movie moves at such a quick pace. Because it has to cram so much into um, 80 minutes. It's like one hour, 20 minutes long. It doesn't have the time to <laughs> spend on these emotional moments. There are some emotional scenes in here, especially with the friendship between Taran and, and Ganki, the, the the little creature, the, the the white creature that he meets in the forest. The scene at the end with those two is is very well done. Before he he jumps into the cauldron, I thought that was a very moving moment. But that was the most moving moment in it. There wasn't many uh, emotive scenes in there, so I just felt the movie could have slowed down a little bit and taken the time to really spend on the characters. I don't think the characters were hugely well done. I mean, they were okay. They were serviceable enough, but I felt like to, to push this further, to make it even more epic, um, they should have really uh, spent more time on the characters. I mean, one thing they did do which raises the stakes of the story is that in order to stop <laughs> the villains, they had to sacrifice somebody to jump into the cauldron. And this is where that scene comes in, which I spoke about just now, about Taran and Ganki, and originally Taran is going to jump into the cauldron, but then his his little white furry friend, <laughs> Ganki, decides to uh, to jump in for him, and he says, you know, you have loads of friends, I don't have any friends, which is actually quite a sad line. It's 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 a it's quite a, a heartfelt line, and you feel sorry for the little creature because <laughs> he just wants to be he's just friendly and he wants to be accepted. He's very cute. Well, as this real sort of for us to talk something like this, oh, master, master. He's a bit like a. A, a, a sort of a cross, the voice is kind of a cross between Stitch and Gollum. That might sound a bit weird, like Gollum from Lord of the Rings and Stitch from Lilo and Stitch. But the characters were fine. I mean, you've got you've, you've got Taran, who's the, the central protagonist. He's a pig farmer. He looks after this pig called Henwyn, who for some reason has the ability to to see where the cauldron is. I mean, they never explain that. I don't know how, but uh, okay, fair enough. But I do feel the performance from the actor is very stiff. Like I feel like the voice acting from Grant Bardsley, who voices Taron, it's very one note. Like sometimes the emotional range isn't always there, and I was a bit disconnected sometimes with his performance. But the character's fine. You know, he serves well enough. He's just like a 
you know, again, a cliche character, you know, a boy who just dreams of being a warrior and dreams of being a hero better than the life that he's got. Um, we've seen this before. And he meets a princess called Elonwi, played by Susan Sheridan. I don't know where the hell this chick comes from. She just comes in and out of nowhere comes into the story when he's in the prison cell. Like, I think she's being chased by the guards or something. Um, we don't know much about her at all. I don't actually know where she comes from, what sort of princess she is from. There's no character development for her whatsoever. She's there as a love interest, which is okay, but I would have preferred to know a bit more about her character, you know, beforehand. So I feel like the movie did itself a disservice by even introducing her because her inclusion seems kind of pointless. And we also have the villain whose name I don't even know. I think he's just called... I think it's the Creeper. I I don't know. I can't remember the villain's name. The villain is terrible in this film. The villain is bland, forgettable, doesn't do much, and the villain is taken out like that. Much too easily. I feel there could have been so much more of a confrontation between Taron and the villain at the, at the very end, and the, 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 the climax for me to this movie was just weightless. It was totally weightless, and it was over like that. It was over so abruptly. So, uh, yeah, I, I just felt that there could have been so much more. Like, it was entertaining, but I just thought it could have been so much more impactful. It didn't It didn't have the impact. Like, you, you didn't feel like the, the adventure was building and building to the climax. It, it almost sort of built to nothing, really. So I have Freddie Jones' voice as Dalben, who's the man who takes care of Taron on the farm. We also have uh, Flood La Flamme, uh, voiced by Nigel Hawthorne, um, Flam is, is a good character, I suppose. He's kind of entertaining. He's like a comic relief character. He's this sort of doddery old <laughs> musician who joins them on their journey. He's, he's also in the prison. He gets introduced out of nowhere as well. So the movie's, uh, quite rushed in, in a lot of areas. I think certainly with regards to the characters uh, introducing the supporting cast, it really doesn't, it really, it really just throws these characters in just because they need to be there or just because it has, it feels like it has to throw them in. The only character that really gets a slow introduction is Taron. is is the is the main character. Taron. He's he's on the farm, and even then, his story is not that interesting. If I'm going to be totally honest, so I would describe this uh, movie as one of the lower tiered Disney movies, but it still has a fun <laughs> element to it. It is a fun adventure. Like there's a big chase sequence when they have to escape the prison from the guards. And there is a great confrontation with the villain, well, kind of. Ultimately, The Black Cauldron, for me, is not a great movie. It's it's good. It's 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 solid. It's decent. But I wouldn't say that this is a perfect film. It's very rushed. The character development is kind of all over the place. Uh, it really needed a lot, a lot more to it, to be honest, than just what we got. But the animation is beautiful, and it looks breathtaking, and it looks very cinematic. It has a great cinematic scope. Also, the magic sword that... Taron finds is really cool. Like it's a great sword, but where does he? He just finds it in this in, in in the prison, and we don't get to know much about the sword either. So I mean, this is a fun movie, but there are a lot of things that that, that are not explained here and just come off as plot conveniences. To be perfectly honest, I will give the Black Cauldron a very strong seven out of ten. <laughs> I don't think it's perfect. I don't think it's 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 perfect at all. But it's it's entertaining enough for what for what it is. But it could have been a lot better. So that's my review of the Black Cauldron. Please leave your comments down below. Let me know what did you think of this movie. Please be sure to hit the subscribe button if you like this video, and uh, please feel free to access more videos on my channel and uh, give me likes and comments. I would be, very much appreciate that. So anyway, stay tuned for more reviews, rankings, and videos. And until next time, I'm Mr. Tardis11. Thank you very much. See you soon. Bye for now.